Hello, my name is Human Behzadi and I'm president of the Canadian Association of Music Libraries, Archives and Documentation Centres. It is my distinct privilege to welcome you all to CAMEL's 50th anniversary conference. Please accept my heartfelt congratulations on this important milestone of our association. Cette célébration du 50e de l'ACBM est aussi notre premier congrès virtuel. Nous traversons actuellement une période difficile dans nos vies personnelles ainsi que dans nos démarches professionnelles. In hindsight, I'm most grateful to have served and led the association over the last two years. I'm humbled by CAMEL members' resilience and thank them for their commitment and contributions to our community of practice. Le titre de cette conférence affirme les pensées et les préoccupations des membres de la CBM. Réflexion et renouveau, reflections and renewal, suggest that as we are thinking of our past 50 years, celebrating the achievements of CAMEL members and their impact on all aspects of music information in Canada, we prepare ourselves for an exciting chapter in the association's life. We acknowledge that CAMEL is the sum of its members, thriving when we dream of meaningful goals and collaborate to achieve them. Amidst the constant changes in our profession, the strength of our community of practice has been the consistent element in CAMEL's life. Just over the past two years, CAMEL members have come together to work on an evolving website for the association, formed a new and expanded editorial board of our journal, CAMEL Review, and participated in a strategic planning exercise for the association. Ces réalisations font preuve qu'une participation accrue à tous les aspects de la vie de l'ACBM nous permettent d'atteindre nos objectifs communs. Comme je le dis souvent, nous sommes plus forts ensemble. Following my address, you will hear the congratulatory messages of the YAML, MuseCan, and MLA presidents. I am most grateful to YAML president Stanislav Harabia, MuseCan president John Thomas Godin, and MLA president Liza Vick for their participation in our opening ceremony. Thank you so much. CAMEL looks forward to the continuation of our deep collaborations with your associations. The rest of this hour will be devoted to the celebration of CAMEL's most illustrious founder, Helmut Kallman. And what better way to honor Dr. Kallman than through speaking with the six winners of the Helmut Kallman Award, the most prestigious award of our association. I had the privilege to speak to them via Zoom and ask them a few questions about Helmut Kallman, CAMEL, and the past and future of our association. The celebration theme will continue throughout the conference and you will have the opportunity to refresh your memories about CAMEL colleagues and past events, or learn more about our community of practice if this happens to be your first CAMEL conference. On each day, in the last 15 minutes of our 30-minute break, you will hear from long-standing CAMEL members as they share their memories and what CAMEL has meant to them through the years. Chers collègues, encore une fois, je vous souhaite une bonne conférence et surtout des échanges significatifs avec les participants. Happy 50th anniversary, CAMEL. My name is Stanislav Hrabia. I'm president of YAML. Dear members of the Canadian Association of Music Libraries, Archives and Documentation Centers, dear colleagues, dear friends, it is my great pleasure and privilege to speak to you during today's special celebration. On behalf of the YAM board and all YAM members, I would like to congratulate you on this occasion of the 50th anniversary of CAMEL. Celebrating the anniversary is an important moment in the history of each association. This is an opportunity to recall the history, to commemorate the founders, summarize activities, meet together to celebrate. But this time it's only possible in a virtual form. And to look into the future with new plans and projects. YAML 
is honored for being invited to participate in this celebration. The history of Carmel, the successor to the Canadian Music Library Association, is almost as long as YAML's. YAML is turning 70 this year, and we will celebrate the anniversary at the online Congress in July. The history of Carmel and YAML is full of examples of a very successful cooperation. And it would not be possible to list here the numerous Carmel members served in a variety of positions in YAM different bodies. YAM Council, forums, sections, committees and working groups, and those who regularly participated in YAM conferences. But let me mention Maria Calderisi, the president of YAM in the years 1986-89, to 89. Alison Hall, the secretary general since 1995 until 2003, and the member of the YAML board in recent years, Joseph Hafner. I would like to thank all CAML members for your activity and cooperation with YAML over the years. CAML new website shows in a beautiful way all conferences organized by your association. Kaml was an organizer of three YAM conferences in Montreal in 1975 and 2012 and in Ottawa in 1994. The strength of YAM is the strength of its members, individual and institutional, engaged in an activity of national branches. Local initiatives publications, research and professional development projects, involvement in actions at the regional level and in worldwide projects, shows the importance of exchange of experiences, which allows mutual complementarity in different areas and leads into the success of the entire organization. Your achievements in those fields are remarkable. Dear colleagues, I want to extend again YAML's most heartfelt congratulations to your association. I wish you a lot of success and satisfaction from your work, much energy and enthusiasm to achieve what you plan to achieve. And even more, I extend my best wishes to all individual CAML members. We always say that YAML is a big family. So please pass on YAML's greetings to your colleagues, friends and your families. Congratulations and I wish you a very successful conference. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is John Thomas Gade. I am a, an associate professor of music at Brandon University. Uh, I come to you today from my office in Brandon, Manitoba, which is on Treaty 2 territory, home to the Dakota, Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dene, and Metis peoples. And I'm here to uh, bring you greetings on behalf of the uh, Canadian University Music Society, which I am currently the president. Uh, as most of you know, Muscan and Camel are sister societies having been created at almost the same time. Muscan was founded in 1965, just a few years before your own association, uh, as a place for university music administrators to gather, and it changed its constitution in 1971, the same year as your society was founded to become the member-driven uh, association it is today. So our two societies really are in many ways twin societies and share that very long history. Uh, over the last 50 years, most of uh, our conferences have actually been joint conferences. Uh, we have met with 
camel more often than not. And that has been a feature of our, uh, our meetings that has been missed over the last two years. And the, really the bonds between our two societies mirror the bonds between the individual members of our societies. Uh, today, I want to bring you a message of gratitude and of congratulations, not only for this 50th anniversary meeting, but also for all the work you've done over the last year to keep our libraries open, to continue to maintain the services that our students, that our faculty, and that our uh, librarians and archivists need to continue the important work that we do. Um, I've been in fairly regular contact with your president over the last uh, several months, and we are working on initiatives to continue this bond between our two societies and hopefully for a joint meeting for 2022. So again, congratulations on this 50th anniversary celebration and on this conference. I hope you all have an excellent meeting. Greetings, Canadian Association of Music Libraries. My name is Liza Vick, and I am president of the Music Library Association and the Alma US branch. Congratulations to Kamal on your 50th anniversary. Kamal and MLA share a rich and intertwining history, and we celebrate our Canadian colleagues for reaching this impressive milestone. I thank Human and Maureen for inviting me to record this tribute and would like to very briefly highlight a few of our most recent collaborations. In February 2017, the MLA and Kamal, both branches of YAML, hosted the first Pan-American Regional YAML meeting in Orlando, Florida. This meeting was led by then MLA President Michael Rogan and then Kamal President Brian McMillan. Brian currently serves on our board as member at large parliamentarian. In the fall of 2018, the New England and New York State Ontario chapters of MLA, MLA board members, and the Montreal chapter of Kamal held very productive joint meetings at McGill University, enjoying fellowship and learning from each other. We also congratulate Kamal on your recent exciting accomplishments, including a newly redesigned website, a new editorial board of the Kamal Review with a newly restructured issue, formation of the Kamal Renewal Task Force in 2019. MLA is also embarking upon a new strategic planning phase from 2022 through 2030. I'm struck by your directions. In particular, you seek meaningful relationships with diverse associations and your commitment to anti-racism and culturally sustaining practices is to be emulated. I know that we have much to learn from your renewal task force and diversity initiatives. We share goals with you, our neighbors to the north, to improve our profession's inclusivity, diversify our collections, and share our love of music and libraries. I hope that we will continue our meaningful teamwork far into the future. Once again, a joyous 50th to you. I can't wait to see what you accomplish in the next 50. I look forward very much to enjoying your conference. Thank you. I'm Maria Calderisi, former music librarian at the National Library of Canada, and uh, a few other things, but I've been 
retired, so to speak, since 1995, so I'm a little bit of a fossil. However, I'm very happy to be here. Hello, I am Elaine Huber, a Distinguished Research Professor of Carleton University. And uh, I retired from the university in 2005. And since then, I've been largely uh, involved in still performing and teaching privately and doing a bit of research. Uh, my name is Kathleen McMorrow. I was the librarian at the Faculty of Music at the University of Toronto for many, many years. I retired in 2013, and since then I've been involved with a, a concert presenting organization called Music in the Afternoon. It's originally the Women's Musical Club of Toronto, founded 1898. So a historical object that we hope to keep going well into the 21st, if not the 22nd century. Alors, je suis Marie-Thérèse Lefebvre, professeur retraité, mais toujours associé à la Faculté de musique à l'Université de Montréal, où j'ai enseigné l'histoire de la musique au Canada et au Québec pendant une trentaine d'années. Hello, my name is Robin Elliott. I... I'm the Jean A. Chalmers Chair in Canadian Music at the Faculty of Music in the University of Toronto, where I am a professor of musicology and also the director of the Institute for Music in Canada. Uh, I'm also a graduate of the University of Toronto. I did my PhD in musicology there in 1990, and then I returned in 2002 as the Chalmers Chair in Canadian Music, which I continue to hold. I'm Je suis bibliothécaire responsable de la normalisation bibliographique à BNQ. Well, in a word or two, I would say inspiring and with awe, because I had the privilege to work with him for 15 years work for him and with him and I was never ceased to be amazed at how much he had accomplished in his life uh, since uh, his early days at the CBC library his mission to uh, to collect to document to disseminate Canadian music and music in Canada just never left him. Um, there's a wonderful list of his writings in Musical Canada that would attest to the uh, breadth and depth of his, his commitment to this mission. But beyond all this, he was so generous in sharing his knowledge and enthusiasm with his colleagues with and encouraging them to do work in the same vein. And his own appreciation of their work led him to co-found the precursor to Canada was then called Canadian Music Library Association. And that um, kind of cooperation that he envisaged, I think, still continues to exist today. Not being a direct member of CAMO, uh, my relationship with uh, Helmut Kallman was very much on a personal level. When I came to Ottawa in 1977, of course, he was head of the library uh, at that time called the National Library of Canada. And because I had been hired as a specialist in Canadian music, 
at Carleton University. I spent many hours at the National Library uh, researching um, the Canadian music collection there. And of course, Helmut was a wonderful guide uh, in doing that. My first uh, contact, specific contact with uh, Helmut Kahlman <clears throat> was a few years before that. My mother had uh, bought his history book on music in Canada uh, before uh, 1914. And she was very delighted because he had um, uh, was several paragraphs in there about her former teacher, W.O. Forsyth. And when I was a graduate student at the University of Toronto, uh, taking the graduate Canadian music course, in which I was the only student at the time, um, <clears throat> my professor, uh, Dr. Carl Murray, asked me what I wanted to do uh, for that course. And I said, well, my mother was a student of W.O. Forsyth, and she has quite a bit of his music. Uh, could I just concentrate on uh, maybe doing my biography and looking at his music and so on? And uh, Dr. Morris said, oh, that sounds like a wonderful idea. So when I went back uh, to home to my mother's place and interviewed her about W. Forsyth, and then she suggested, oh, I have some letters around and other things. You better go down and look at those old scrapbooks down in the basement. So I was looking through these scrapbooks and I came across several clippings that she had taken out of the Toronto Telegram at that time. And apparently this was a regular series that they had on the, in the Saturday editions of the paper where they did a, a biography of a Canadian composer and then listed a number of his and her compositions. And I found this quite interesting. So I decided to write a letter to uh, Hannah Coleman and ask him if he knew about uh, these articles that had appeared in the Telegram. Well, I got back a personally written letter from Helmut. And he told me how he was so delighted to find out about this series. And he had from, had his assistant at the National Library look for the other uh, entries in that series. And it had um, made uh, so much more uh, material for the library to look for works and so on and so forth and have available about these um, composers that were covered. So that was my, my first personal um, connection with Helmut, and uh, I've always treasured it. When I first met Helmut, I was intimidated. By, by 1970, Helmut had already produced, as um, head of the CBC library, he had already produced a catalog of Canadian composers. Uh, he had written a history of music in Canada. Uh, he was working on establishing the music division for the first time in the new National Library. Uh, now, how much of this were how much of these were accomplishments for Camel? Well, they were accomplishments for music in Canada. Uh, Helmut's vision of a nation's music was, I presume, shaped by those 19th century, early 20th century uh, marvelous compilations, Feti, Paz Direc, Robert Eichner, the Hofmeister Handbuch, great music bibliographies and establishing what music in, in Germany or in Europe consisted of. And when Helmut arrived in Canada, he could see that all of that was lacking. Uh, before he arrived in Canada, his life was astonishing. Um, in the 
the collection of his writings, um, Mapping Canada's Music, there's a final chapter where he talks about his early life <clears throat> in Berlin before he had to flee Germany. And it's, it's marvelous reading. I hope that everyone takes a look at that at some point in their lives to appreciate how uh, Helmut's background and how wonderful he was. Alors, les souvenirs personnels que je garde de M. Kalman sont encore bien présents euh, à mon esprit. J'ai beaucoup d'admiration pour euh, le travail de pionnier que Dr. Kalman a fait pour développer la recherche euh, musicale, l'histoire de la musique au Québec et euh, au Canada. Et euh, son livre qu'il a publié en 1960, « History of Music in Canada, 1534-1914 a été un livre extrêmement important pour démarrer euh, les recherches. Et lorsque je suis devenue professeure à la Faculté de musique en 1980, ce livre a été mon premier outil de travail qui m'a permis de développer par la suite les recherches en début de carrière. Euh, et je me souviens, Dr. Kalman, lorsque euh, il y a participé à la création de la Société pour le patrimoine musical canadien. C'était l'une de mes premières rencontres avec lui, un homme chaleureux, souriant, et toujours à l'écoute en essayant, euh, disons, d'encourager euh, les recherches. Et ensuite, je l'ai revu en 1982 parce qu'il a participé à la création de l'Encyclopédie de la musique au Canada et les bureaux euh, de Gilles Potvin, qui était responsable de la section francophone, étaient situés juste à côté de mon bureau à la faculté de musique. Et donc, je pouvais croiser à l'occasion, lorsque Dr. Kalman venait rencontrer Gilles Potvin, et on pouvait échanger quelques mots à ce moment-là. Et finalement, il a été présent en 1982 à la fondation de l'ARMUC, l'Association de recherche sur la musique du Québec. Il est donc présent à cette fondation et je crois qu'il en était très heureux parce que c'était un peu une conséquence de tout le travail qu'il avait fait depuis de nombreuses années à Ottawa. I recall Helmut Kalman mainly as a, a research colleague rather than through his association with Camel. Um, and my research association with Helmut Kalman was primarily in two different projects, the Canadian Musical Heritage Society series of publications of uh, early Canadiana, and then of course, the Encyclopedia of Music in Canada, for which I was the um, English style editor for the second edition. And Helmut Kalman, of course, was one of the editors of both the first and second editions of the Encyclopedia of Music in Canada. Uh, one of the interesting things about Helmut Kalman for me was that he, he always called himself a music historian rather than a musicologist. And Although I do self-identify as a musicologist, I also am very sympathetic to Helmut Kalman's idea about what a music historian was, as opposed to a musicologist. Um, Helmut Kalman was always interested in the, the Leopold von Ranke idea of telling history vs eigentlich gewesen, as it would have been said, you know, history as it actually was. In other words, concentrating on the facts and Uh, archiving the sources that are important to, to keep alive the history rather than abstract theorizing, which I think Helmut Kalman would have associated with musicology. Uh, and I also have very fond recollection of once um, playing Mozart violin sonatas with Helmut. He loved to make music. I think his interest in music was really coming out of this very deep-seated love of amateur music making, of just sitting down at the piano and experiencing music for himself. And so it was, it was a lot of fun to play uh, some Mozart violin sonatas with him once when he was in Toronto. I believe it is important not only to 
be recognized by one's peers for one's contribution to the profession. But by its very name, it becomes a kind of benediction or approval from Helmut Kallman himself, whom we might consider to be the dean of music librarianship in Canada. There were music librarians before him, of course, and notably from the University of Toronto, Jean Lavender, and of the Ottawa Public Library, O'Greta McNeil, who herself became the first president of the CMLA. There was Lucien Brochu at Laval University. It was his contact with them, really, that prompted the formation of the CMLA at that time. It would be easy um, to forget about him, especially, um, especially the new, newer colleagues who never knew him, but who continue to believe in his values and continue to carry out his mission in a way. So it keeps his name and his spirit alive. Well, I, first of all, I think it uh, honors uh, a person who was crucial um, in making us realize what a wonderful heritage we have in this country of music. Uh, I have always found it quite incredible that Helmut is a Jewish immigrant to this country. And of course, he came here in um, very difficult um, conditions, having to live for a number of years in prison and war camps. But he asked himself this question, what music has been going on in Canada? And then he endeavored to look into the whole situation. And as his stepdaughter uh, told me uh, about the trips that when he was um, head of the CBC uh, Music Library in Toronto, uh, the usual excursion on weekends was that they would get in the car and he would uh, travel to uh, little places around Toronto uh, looking for um, estate sales or auctions or going into uh, shops that had used furniture, this kind of thing. And if he found piano benches or whatever, um, he would start looking for Canadian music and Canadian published music. And that was the way that he um, accumulated such a wonderful collection of Canadian music, which of course became the backbone of the Canadian music collection at the National Library in Ottawa. Uh, so I feel that the award in part uh, honors persons who have endeavored to carry on this wonderful um, heritage and direction that Helmut gave us over the years. Well, it's a reminder of, of what the association is about. It uh, represents aspiration. Je dois dire que de recevoir un prix de l'Association des bibliothécaires et archivistes du Canada, archivistes dans le domaine de la musique, Euh, était euh, extrêmement important pour moi parce que je ne suis ni bibliothécaire ni archiviste, je, je suis musicologue, mais euh, c'était peut-être euh, une façon de reconnaître pour, à travers moi, mais pour tout le travail des musicologues accompli, 
mais accomplie uniquement par la présence des archivistes et des bibliothécaires, car sans eux et sans elles, les chercheurs ne pourraient pas euh, faire le travail qu'ils ont accompli depuis plusieurs années. Je pense par exemple à, à l'héritage du docteur Kalman qui a transmis euh, son savoir à Maria Calderesi, euh, à Janine Barrio et euh, aujourd'hui à Maureen Evans. Maureen qui m'a tellement aidée dans mes recherches et qui a été si précieuse pour me permettre de développer euh, mon secteur euh, de recherche au cours des dernières années. Well, you know, there are not many awards in the field of Canadian music studies. So in the first place, it's just wonderful that there is this award for Canadian music studies. But what I think is particularly um, important about this award is that it reflects Helmut Kalman's own interests in that it is awarded for efforts on behalf of Canadian music either by music librarians and archivists or by music historians and musicologists. And I think that, that um, keeping both of those aspects of the award in play is important for the association and important for honoring Helmut Kalman's memory. And I'm certainly very honored as a musicologist to uh, have been invited by Camel to, to um, have this award. Le prix Kalman est une façon pour l'association de reconnaître les efforts de ceux et de celles qui ont contribué à l'association ou à la profession d'une façon remarquable et substantielle. Et par là, le prix en fait peut représenter une source d'inspiration et d'encouragement pour les personnes qui veulent apporter leur contribution. It's funny. Camel has always been there and what it has, I mean, it has been there as part of my professional life. It was, it was just part of my existence, really. And from the very beginning, um, it It means to me, in the word, cooperation, uh, working together and sharing difficulties and solutions. It was uh, a reminder to me that beyond this big institution that I was working at, there were individuals who needed something that I had and was able to provide them with through the network. So it was, um, as I said, just a wonderful presence in my working life. I can't really pick out a specific moment, um, except maybe to go right back to the beginning when I first uh, attended a camel conference and it was shortly after its founding. I was uh, then coming to the end of my BMUS studies at McGill and I was contemplating librarianship as the next step. I was so um, pleased by the welcome and, um, and encouragement that was given to me by everyone there, but also um, so interested that there were that their activities were varied and many. And so it was um, that, that feeling of comradeship 
of cordiality, of collegiality that has never left me and continues to be present as well still in my life today. Although my active appreciation and uh, my, uh, my actual activities have long ceased. And you had a personal uh, knowledge of what uh, those librarians could guide them to in their respective collections, whatever they were looking after. And then not only on the national level, but Helmut had all of these international connections. And that meant that he could write to librarians all over the world and ask them, did they have such and such in their collection? Or did they know anybody who might? Because one of the things that we did uh, when we were endeavoring to find compositions by uh, earlier Canadian composers in the Canadian Musical Heritage Society, of course, many of those composers went abroad because they, they weren't able to um, follow um, the, um, life of a, as a musician to the extent that they wanted to within Canada, particularly um, before 1950. So many of them ended up in other countries. Uh, the major example that I would uh, refer to uh, in this regard was when we finally tracked down descendants of Clarence Lucas. And um, that was in part uh, due to connections that Helmut had with the Bibliothèque in Paris. Because uh, some of those descendants of Lucas uh, were teaching at the conservatoire. Uh, we knew of addresses of those descendants. And as a result, we wrote and we discovered the descendant who had over 300 manuscripts of Clarence Lucas in publications. And so, of course, we uh, negotiated with uh, that descendant and uh, subsequently, of course, um, published a number of Clarence Lucas works in the volumes of the Canadian Musical Heritage Society. And it ended up that that descendant agreed to um, donate that whole collection to um, the Library and Archives in Ottawa. My closest connection with Camel has been the fact that I've had very close relationships to members of Campbell, to librarians who are in Campbell, and they've helped me a great deal, like Maria Calderisi, for instance, Kathleen McMorrow, um, and, um, and even, you know, uh, some of my students actually took uh, courses with me and, and went on to be librarians in important uh, libraries in this country, including McGill for that matter. And um, so, I mean, I've, I've kept in touch with, with those persons and they have been very helpful over the years and often have alerted me, of course, to um, new collections that have come into certain libraries and things like that, which I have been very grateful for. Camel for me means all the colleagues that I have met over the years. Some of these colleagues have turned into lasting friends. Uh, so in current parlance networking, I, over the years, I was able to, to know many of the significant players in, the, in music librarianship uh, in Canada and to some extent the US. So those are, those are my memories. They're memories of the individuals that uh, whose friendship I've appreciated. So the memory that I would like to share with you of Camel is of the 1992 Charlottetown Annual Conference, which Peter Hyam and I organized 
by fax, by fax by, and by telephone. I wouldn't ever wish that procedure on anyone. However, it was all worth it. The meeting was supposedly in Charlottetown, but <clears throat> the fun part was our trip to Peter's home library, Mount Allison in Sackville, New Brunswick. And I guess we had meetings and papers and reports and talks there. But after it, we retreated to Peter's house where we had a spectacular lobster dinner prepared by Edna Boland, his wife, who's a great cook and a lively personality and an unforgettable rendition of a, of a song called Here Comes the Lobster Man, the text of which was taken from uh, uh, a restaurant uh, napkin display and the music of which was provided by Suzanne Meyer Sawa at her liveliest. That I'm afraid rather than any bibliographical revelation is my best memory, my warmest memory of camel life. Je pense que c'est une association essentielle de regroupement des bibliothécaires et des archivistes en musique et euh, à ce titre, l'association euh, permet euh, justement à ces euh, bibliothécaires et archivistes d'être euh, en en étroite collaboration avec les chercheurs. C'est ça que je trouve intéressant euh, de la part de cette association qui fait beaucoup pour, euh, disons, contribuer au travail, à la reconnaissance des archives musicales au Québec et au Canada. Well, Camel has been my second academic home, I'd like to think of it that way, um, along with the Canadian University Music Society. And I think one of the reasons that I feel so at home in CAMEL and, and welcomed by CAMEL as an association is that um, I'm a music librarian manqué. Uh, my mother was actually a librarian at Queen's University in Kingston, and I think I have librarianship running through my blood. And in fact, I remember reading um, Careers in Music, a guide which came out in the 1980s. And Helmut Kalman wrote the uh, entry in that book on what it takes to be a music librarian. And I read that article by Helmut and thought, he's describing me. I should be a music librarian. What am I doing in musicology? Because uh, the musicology article was written by Gregory Butler at UBC. And I didn't feel at all <laughs> like a musicologist after reading that. So Camel, like I say, it's, it, I feel like it's my second home that if I had had a different career in music, it definitely would have been as a music librarian. I, uh, I, I just love music librarianship as a, as a non-practicing person. And, and so I just think it's wonderful that Camel exists and that I get to, uh, have my sort of alternative career by, by associating with CAMEL. I have two particular memories about CAMEL to share. Uh, one was, of course, when I did receive the Helmut Kalman Award, and I was so honored, and I feel so particularly lucky that I received the award in 2012, which was the occasion of um, Camel hosting the International Association of Music Libraries, Archives and Documentation Centers. And that joint meeting in Montreal was just such a wonderful occasion. And there was a lovely dinner afterwards after the award. And it, I just have such warm memories of, of the 2012 Montreal meeting uh, at which I received the award. And the other warm memory I have of Camel is the next year, actually, in 2013, when Kama was meeting jointly with Moose Can in uh, Victoria, BC. And I was particularly happy at that meeting to be able to participate in a tribute session to Kathleen McMorrow, who has been a very dear friend and inspiration to me ever since I first met her over 40 years ago when I came to the University of Toronto for graduate studies in musicology. So I just, having known Kathleen for so long, 
it was just such uh, uh, an honor for me to be able to give a short uh, uh, presentation at that uh, session in the 2013 Camel meeting, which was held in her as a tribute to her. For me, the CBM has also represented an occasion to m'impliquer in my milieu professional. L'association a fourni un cadre dans lequel j'ai pu apporter une contribution personnelle envers mes collègues, en particulier comme membre du conseil d'administration et comme membre du comité de catalogage. Euh, cette implication m'a ensuite encouragé à m'impliquer au sein d'autres associations comme la Music Library Association aux États-Unis et la IBM, euh, qui a été élue à ce moment-là et a bien résumé la relation que j'ai entretenue avec l'association depuis de nombreuses années. Cela ne sera sans doute pas une surprise, mais le souvenir qui représente ma relation avec la CBM est sans doute la réception à l'Université de Toronto en 2017, au cours de laquelle le prix Kalman m'a été remis. Ça a été une soirée riche en émotions et la citation du prix euh, qui a été lue à ce moment-là a bien résumé la relation que j'ai entretenue avec l'association depuis de nombreuses années. Personnellement, j'aimerais que la CBM trouve des façons d'encourager la participation des bibliothécaires et des techniciens en documentation qui travaillent avec les documents musicaux, mais pas nécessairement à temps plein, et ceux qui travaillent en dehors du milieu universitaire. Euh, comme tous n'ont pas le soutien financier qu'il faut de la part de leur institution pour assister au congrès annuel, organiser plus d'événements en ligne au courant de l'année serait une façon de susciter cette participation de tous les coins du pays. Maybe it's a function of getting older that uh, I would like to see Camel stay the same way as it is right now, <laughs> rather than evolving into something different. Um, one of the things that I do admire about Camel is that it is open to non-music librarians such as myself, and I would dearly like to see that continue. I think it's wonderful that, um, and, and sometimes I, I sit in on the sessions where the music librarians are talking about highly technical uh, aspects of your profession and um, it's, it makes me realize that I'm not a music librarian, much as though I admire music librarians, you, you have such specialized knowledge about cataloging and, and everything that, you know, the profession of being a librarian, it's, it's, it's wonderful that uh, that exists and it's, it's a, a bit of a mystery to me, but at the same time, there's always many sessions at Camel that are of, of tremendous interest to me, especially as, you know, regarding my Canadian music interests, but more generally, making music librarianship open to non-specialists, I think is one of the things that Camel does so, so well. And, you know, just making everybody feel welcome at Camel sessions. It's, it's definitely one of the most welcoming uh, scholarly associations I've ever been associated with. Um, the, I, I see that the you know the website the camel website has been beautifully updated recently which leads me to you know realize that obviously technology is going to play an important role in the future of music librarianship and I, and I do want to see camel keep abreast and make its own contributions to technology and the, the, all the wonderful ways that uh, technology facilitates the preservation and the, and the sharing of of documentation and scholarship about music? Uh, certainement, uh, comment dirais-je, en aidant ou en, oui, je dirais en collaborant avec les chercheurs pour uh, convaincre uh, les familles ou certaines institutions privées uh, d'avoir à leur côté <coughs> un archiviste pour développer les archives musicales et les rendre publiques. Vous savez, il y a encore beaucoup de, de fonds privés auxquels nous n'avons pas accès. Et euh, parfois, euh, je, je travaille à essayer de convaincre ces institutions ou ces personnes de rendre public Mais s'il y a une archiviste derrière moi, un ou une archiviste derrière moi, qui peut euh, nous aider à faciliter euh, l'accès la, euh, à ces archives. Je voudrais en profiter, si vous me le permettez, 
pour féliciter Maureen, qui a été mon élève il y a plusieurs années, euh, la féliciter dans ses nouvelles fonctions de présidente de l'ACBM et je lui souhaite vraiment euh, tout le plaisir et toute la réussite dans ses nouvelles fonctions. This is a question that I really can't answer, although I'd like to. Uh, uh, librarians, as you know, or at least I've always felt obliged to answer. Whenever comes, someone comes up to ask me a question, I'm back at the reference desk and doing my best to answer them. But I'm not sure I can answer this question. Um, technology in the future will be leading you all by the nose. But I do hope that in future, all CAMEL members have the same experience of networking, friendship, um, interchange with colleagues, whether it's, whether it's information or advice or addressing concerns. I, hope, I just hope that in the future that CAMEL is as much a, a source of strength and energy to members in the future as it has been to me. So, I mean, if Camel can, I mean, with their expertise, I would think that they could provide guidelines for libraries about how musical resources should be cataloged in this technological age and um, to find ways and means that would encourage um, users to find out more about our musical heritage. That, I would think, would be a real, wonderful way of honoring Helmut's memory. Because he worked so hard for so many years, both at the CBC and in Ottawa, to gather this um, heritage, to make us more aware of it through the uh, encyclopedias. That is the most difficult question of all. Because so much has changed since I was active. And the rate of change seems to be growing faster and faster exponentially, even as we speak. In a way, connections are so much easier and um, sharing of information and even documents and even whole collections are at our fingertips. And, um, and easy in a way, you don't have to get up from your chair and go to another building and look through their collections and catalogs. But there's so much less in a way of um, personal contact, uh, I feel that even meetings and conferences are now held virtually, started because of the pandemic, but it turns out that it is easier in a way because you don't have to travel, it's much less expensive. But I personally hope that the, um, that the personal contact of being a librarian uh, continues to be paramount, that, that students and 
anybody who is looking for information about music or looking for the music itself will still come in person to the library and that Camel continues to meet in some way or other in the flesh because sitting down with a colleague and sharing a coffee or a glass of wine and talking about this and that is still, I think, very important from a human point of view. And that is what I hope will continue.